Jesus. No, just the chorus. Just the chorus. That's the dark red book, 28. And you may be seated. 
Welcome to Harmony Baptist Church. We're glad you're here with us this morning for our 11 o'clock worship. We have Sunday school at 10, worship at 11, live on Facebook at 11. I'd like to welcome all of you that are watching on Facebook. Thank you for being with us today. Please like, share, comment. Somebody's watching on the back. If you need a prayer request or something to be added, we'll add that as well. So thank you for being here and watching with us. Wednesday night dinner is 530. Uh, be here at 445 if you want to help prepare the meal. Um, all ages 6 to 15 will start our uh, Bible study for adults and our classes for the kids. 7 to 8 will be choir practice. Please come be with us if you can. Uh, prayer list this week. We want to uh, keep remembering those that's on the prayer list. Also lift up the family of Biff McGee. Passed away this week. Anybody else with any other prayer requests this week? <coughs> All right. Thank you for that. Vertical students. Uh, got a QR code here to sign up for uh, Sky Zone. Please get signed up for that. Um, uh, we got several things coming up for them. The QR codes will always be on the bulletin. Um, adult pickleball. Joey will be back Monday night, right, Joey? We got to play by his rules when he gets back Monday night, so <laughs> we'll have to change our game up a little bit, Sid. We won't be able to play by our rules. But uh, Joey will be back. Come be with us if you can. It's a lot of fun. Been having a lot of good times with that. The night, family bingo night. Um, five to eight. They're asking everybody that comes to bring a small gift. Lisa, you want to give a little bit of something on that? <laughs> There's a leaf sandwich that went out for email, um, or you can come let me know, or I can just keep up a visit. If you come, bring a small bingo prize, and if everybody can just bring a cover of dish, dessert, or extra share. Okay, just remember that. The 10th, uh, next Sunday, will be daylight savings time. It's on the front of your bulletin. No excuses for being late to church next week. So, or Sunday school, yeah, so, yeah. We have we need you here, so be sure to set your times. Y'all are like us; everything in your house is probably run by Apple, and it, it sets itself ahead anyway. So, please remember that. Um, Sunday, March the tenth, vertical students will be going uh, to Sky Zone Trampoline Park. Must be signed up by today, so please be signed up. March the fourteenth is ladies' lunch at eleven thirty in the Family Life Center. Uh, RSVP to Henrietta Henderson or Betty Ann Bearden. The 24th is Palm Sunday. That'll be our Youth Sunday, moving Youth Sunday up a week. Um, we'll have a meal after the service in the Family Life Center, followed by an Easter egg hunt at the Brady Home. And uh, buckets in the Family Life Center for each age um, group for uh, eggs, 12 eggs for each child. Mel, was that? 12 eggs for each group, or each child for each age group. And... Um, they are also needing some goodies to stuff eggs if you just want to bring some things. We, um, we like to be frugal around here, and after the kids empty all the goodies out of the eggs last year, we saved those eggs. <laughs> so we will refill those eggs and put them back out again. Uh, big area in the field there. We'll use a lot of eggs and let the kids have a lot of fun. Uh, also, with the meal being prepared after, we want everybody to bring a side dish and a dessert. So please be aware of that, uh, the 24th. The 31st will be our Easter Sunday service. Be our uh, sunrise at 7. No Sunday school on that day. We'll be here at sunrise at 7 out by the cross with weather permitting. If some of the men could be here around 6.15, 6.30, we'll be moving chairs out, setting sound up, same thing we always do, and we'll need some help with that, uh, moving stuff out and getting it set up. Um, the 9th, 19th, May the 19th, will be a day of prayer for VBS. And the 10th through the 14th of June is Vacation Bible School. Um, next Saturday, Seth, you want to talk about the high tower next Saturday? The night, yeah. Okay, so uh, next Saturday, uh, this is our third time, so this is the end of the quarter, but we need volunteers to help do stuff at the food bank. Uh, it runs off of volunteers, so make sure if you haven't been yet, come on down. If you don't know where it is, you can reach out to me. I'll let you know. But if you would like to go and us take the church bus, let us know. Um, Gabe, did you get up taking anybody last? We didn't take anybody last time, but okay. um, we'll send my number out. If anybody wants to ride the bus, we'll try to leave here about 7 o'clock or so. It's about a 25, 30 minute ride. They want us there about 30 minutes before. So, yeah, if anybody wants to ride, please, please contact me or contact Seth. And I'll be here, and I'll be willing to take anybody. But if not, I'm just going to drive up there. So, like I say, but 
if anybody wants to, I'll be more than happy to take anybody over there next we, Saturday. We'd love to take anybody ride the bus, but we also would like to know if you're actually going to take the bus, so we're not. I mean, it's pretty early in the morning, so let us know so we're not driving all the way over here for nothing. Um, like I said, we don't mind to do that, but uh, both Gabe and I both, it, it, it makes the trip almost three times longer to come over here and then go back from where we both live. So, uh, but let us know if you're going, if you plan on going, plan to be there around 7.30 and not leave until about 12 or one. We also need ministers as well as for Stage clothing. There's so many things that you can do uh, there. It's, it's, it really is a blessing. Thank y'all for that. Also, um, coming up in the month of March, I'm going to get with Katie and do this. Just want to kind of look at our schedule and see how everything is. We're going to have a high attendance Sunday for Sunday school coming up in the month of March. We're taking the one off for, uh, or I'm sorry, April. We're taking the one off for Easter uh, sunrise. So in April, you'll need to make up one. So we're going to have a high attendance Sunday in the month of April. So I want to get with you, and we're going to promote that, see if we can fill the Sunday school classes here at Harmony. Um, I have a letter here from Oakdale Baptist Church. The deacon board and members of Oakdale Baptist Church cordially invite you to attend the deacon ordination on Sunday, March the 3rd. That's today at 3 o'clock. Brother Justin Cox, Brother Cody Ray, and Brother Russell Thompson have been set aside to be ordained. Ordained ministers and deacons are extended. A special invitation to attend. If you can't attend, please remember uh, these brethren in, in uh, this service in your prayers. Uh, Todd Rainey, church clerk. So let's remember that today at 3 o'clock. Any other announcements? Um, I have a praise report. So I have scans done and went to the doctor Friday. And um, it was a little bit more than normal. So I any cancer, I read the report myself and sent it to the I go back for another set of scans in four months. So just keep whispering a little prayer that those are clear as well. So hopefully no more chemo and I would stay no more surgery, but I unfortunately have another hernia, so that will be fixed. But hopefully the cancer is gone. While we're on praise reports, somebody else has a small praise report. <laughs> I'm in front of the church. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here. First, before I say anything much, I want to thank the good Lord for saving my soul. When I was 11 years old at Cold Mountain during revival, I came and and knelt on an old-fashioned altar and asked the Lord to save me, and He did. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for this church. And for people that have been praying, because I know, I know that you have, and it's, I could feel it in my heart. Little did I know when we stepped in this church five years ago that I was going to go into kidney failure. And need a kidney. But I also didn't know that my match is in this church. We found out last week that Alicia had been going through the process. I'm going to let her say what they told her about the match process so I've been going through this since October quietly semi-anonymously with Lori 
um, on Thanksgiving Day, we were having Thanksgiving dinner, and I was doing my 24-year in catch, and it actually did not go well, so I had to repeat it, so I was a little bummed. Second time, it worked great, um, and then I went to the next step, and I spent all eight hours at Emory one morning, and um, I met a, a lot of amazing people. And the one question they kept asking me is, why do you want to donate to this man? I was like, he's a great man. He's a friend of mine. He's a brother in Christ. And um, like I told Terry yesterday, many years ago, I lost my stepfather, who was a very brutal diabetic, who was also a kidney failure. And he went through dialysis, but he wasn't a candidate for a kidney. And I can tell you now, if he could have been a candidate, he would already have had my kidney. And I wouldn't have one to give you. But... <laughs> I am at peace with this. If anyone was here Wednesday night and you were wondering why I was bawling in choir practice, because Seth, you were singing, how great is our God? And I was just sitting there praying, God, let me find out this week, am I the one? Please, because I want y'all to know how great God is. God is great. And Randy was here Wednesday night, and I went to see him, and I'm just, <laughs> it's not always the best news you get, but there are always just some praise. There's goodness in it. So, but we're excited, <laughs> we're nervous, um, but we have a hot date coming up soon, <laughs> and we get to pick the date, and they'll have the right time, and they're actually going to take my right kidney instead of my left. Traditionally, they take the left, but my left kidney is much larger than my right, so how I look at that is the right kidney at the right time for the right date and the right person. Amen. I love you. Y'all pray for us. Thank you. A first time visitor here with us today. Taylor, would y'all want to stand up and introduce? You don't have to come up, you can just stand where you are. got the title to go with the gray hair. He's grandpa now. So uh, I know there's a lot of prayers been laid up on both sides of the family for that. And I can only imagine what J.W. Day is doing today in heaven. Uh, he loved kids so much. And when we first came here, he, he told me that, James. He said, the kids in this church will love you more than the regular members will. And I have seen that over and over again. Thank you all for having her here today. That's a true blessing for us. Anyone else? Any other announcements? Anything I've overlooked? If you stand to your feet, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. We'll take up the morning offering. We appreciate you all for being here today. We hope and pray that you pray for those that's traveling, um, going to do some work on the kid men stuff for the church. We've got a small group traveling, trying to get some more information, things that we can do better, things we can grow and do more. So uh, we're excited about that. Kenzie, Juliet, you lead us in a word of prayer. So, Heavenly Father God, I thank you for this wonderful day that you've allowed us to have here together in your house, God. I, I just pray that you'll be with us as we go through this message, Lord. Help it touch our hearts. Help it lead us throughout the rest of this week, Lord God. We be with all the many prayer requests, spoken and those that are unspoken, Lord God. I just pray that you'll fill this room with your spirit and your yes. grace, Lord. We may feel you. So I want to say a few words before we sing the next song. It seems like every Sunday we, we come in and we, you know, there's a lot of prayer requests, a, a lot of spoken and unspoken prayer requests. And we, you know, we pray each week for those, uh, for those requests to be heard by our God. And I just love hearing how those prayers are being lifted up and how, the, how God is granting 
those wishes and those prayers. God is good. He is so good. Amen. And I feel him. He's here with us this morning. I feel him moving with us. And I think it's just appropriate that we sing to him this morning how great he is. Let's sing together, if you know the words, how great is our God. <laughs> King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide, and trembles at his voice. He trembles at his voice. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Hey. She stands, and time is in his hands, the beginning and the end, the beginning and the end, the Godhead three in one, he's the Father, Spirit, and the Son, the Lion and the Lamb. He's the lion and the lamb. How great. one more if you'll allow it I'm sure you won't mind but if you know the word sing along chain breaker miles and miles if you've been here in the same old voice tell the same old lies if you're trying to feel the same old holes inside there's a better life there's a better life if you've got pain he's a pain taker if you feel lost he's a way maker if you need freedom or saving he's a prison shaking savior if you've got shame he's a chain breaker 
We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. We've all run to things we know just ain't right. And there's a better life. There's a better life. You got me. You believe it, you receive it, you can feel it, somebody testify. You believe it, you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. His church. Sounds like they got a lot planned. <laughs> got your Bibles, want to turn with me, Matthew, fifth chapter. We uh, had a lot of memories floating through our mind this week, and as the season starts to change and it gets time to get outside. Uh, this time of year, I tend to reminisce more about the past than I do around the holiday season of Christmas and stuff. And you may think that's weird because Christmas was such a special time. And um, around our family, uh, Christmas was special, but I also knew the hardship it put on Mom to uh, be sure we were happy. She always worried about that. And as you become a parent, you do that. You worry that the kids are going to like everything. It's going to be what they want, the right size, the right color. Um, but growing up, the springtime was a lot of my greater memories because that was the time we tilled the ground. That was the time we got the garden ready. And that's when we oversold the uh, seed in the yard and mom about this time of year would probably already have her tulips in the ground but she would be out working around uh, her snowball bushes and putting out pine straw and elephant ear plants. Uh, 
this week I kind of, in my mind, took a walk around the old home place where from the time I was eight, nine years old when we moved there to I left there at 21 when we got married, when you pulled up, you had to stay further and further away from the house because every year mom's plants got bigger and bigger and bigger. And if you came in and the, the heat from your radiator in your car would get up close to her snowball bush, it would turn it brown just in a little bit of time. And Man, she was out there checking those things. But as we went back through our mind this week, there was a memory that came to us. And um, going through these memories in my mind, there's probably 20 or 30 sermon topics that come up. And uh, it's your job today to pray that I don't preach all 20 or 30 of them in this one <laughs> service. But some, my dad always told me this, he said, the best experience is bought experience. Amen? You agree with that? There's things you have to pay for in life. And uh, my best experiences in life came growing up. And uh, I think me and Terry talked about this a couple of weeks ago. I, I didn't grow up poor. I grew up having everything I wanted. But Mama and Daddy was poor, and they drugged me through it the whole way. Amen? And, and, and sometimes going back to those memories of just simple things, sitting still for eight hours in a living room on a summer day with no air condition. Kids, y'all listen to this. No air condition, no Wi-Fi, nothing but a ceiling fan and one of those oscillating fans that stand over in the corner blowing air through and, 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 and swatting flies with a fly swatter. Oh, it was a, a staple in our home. Everybody knew where the fly swatter hung. Amen? But, but this day and time, if the Wi-Fi goes out, we're going to somebody else's house. We're ready to spend the night somewhere else or we're on the phone. God help if the Wi-Fi goes out in the middle of somebody's game and, and, and their points are fixing to be lost and then somebody else is watching a movie on Netflix and you've got to reset the modem and, and man, it's just, it's like a war in our home. Don't turn off the Wi-Fi. But th this week, a, a, a particular memory came back to me and it brought me to this scripture, Matthew 5, 14 through 16, and I'm going to read and then we'll tell you our story and we're going to back up and I'm going to try to put this together, how God wanted us to put it together today. The title of today's message is simply going to be this, Open the Door. And, and, and I know that in my kids' minds back there, they are laughing. I can see it on Zach. I knew I couldn't look at him because they have a little joke they do that says open the door and, and that, that y'all take that up with them. They'll, they'll explain that later. But that's what made this so more intriguing to me was God has given me this message many times over life and I've pushed it to the side and pushed it to the side and, 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 and not preached it. But Matthew 5 and 14 says this, you are the light of the world. Listen to that. That'll preach right there. I could stop right there and that uh, little verse, that a little uh, a part of that verse would preach for hours. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill uh, cannot be hid. I, I want you to know something today, Harmony. Th th this verse explains you to a T. You're the light of the world, and you're a city that's set on a hill that cannot be hid. There is no way the drawn power of this church can be looked away from. I believe that with all that's in me that is, that if somebody ever came into the church and they, they felt the love that's in this place and they, they give it an opportunity to be loved, that they would forever uh, want to be here. They'd always, maybe they just lived here for a little while and then went away. They would have a desire to be in Harmony Church on Sunday mornings because of just what Floyd said, the love in this church. It's something special. Pastor, you're supposed to tell us that. It's your job. I'm not going to stand up here and tell you something that's not true, but that is true. There's love in this place. But it goes on and says this, Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Now how did I get to this scripture? When I was about a 9 or 10 year old boy, I, I used to ride around with dad everywhere he went. 
And, and, and Dad was one of those that says, are you about ready? We're ready to go. And you'd say, yeah, I'm ready. And you'd go get in the truck. And two, three hours later, Dad would come out of the house that he was in because he was still talking. And, and later on in life, I learned when Dad said, you're about ready to go, that meant I had another hour or two. But this, this one day in particular, we were at my great uncle's house. My dad's uh, uncle lived over uh, off of Salem Road, over off Kelly Bridge. And we had went over there and we had took some groceries to him. We had took some, some things over and took some stuff out of the garden. And, and we had got there maybe about 3 or 4 o'clock that day. And this was a, a, a midsummer day. And we had, we had took, and I, I mean, it was a bushel basket of green beans and some squash and I, I remember toting it up the ramp uh, where my, my aunt, uh, great aunt had a wheelchair ramp that went up. I remember toting it up. And, and, and I, I'm going to tell you something today. There's, there's no uh, uh, shame in this uh, about it. But if you'd ever been to their house, they, they were hoarders. And, and so when we got up on the porch, that was about as far as I wanted to go. And, and I, I set those baskets down and I toted them. Of course, Dad toted a small one. And then he began talking, so I went back and told it all the other ones. But when Dad got ready to go, he said, are you ready to go? Now, mind you, we got there 2 or 3 o'clock on a summer day. And I was sitting in the truck, had the windows down, and, and, and I was sitting in that truck, and it was getting hot, and it was, uh, you know, getting a little bit aggravating. And then the, the sun started setting, and I opened up the door, and that's when I was trying to figure out, every time I opened that door, the light came on. You know, I'm, I'm 10, 11 years old, maybe at the most, and that intrigued me. So I started a search. I, I started looking, and I started pushing the door open and pulling the door shut and pushing the door. How did that work? I was trying to figure out how it worked. And I found myself with my hands down in the, the, the door jam, and I found this little white switch. And every time I pushed it, it would go on and it would go off, on and off. And so then I found out that I could leave that door open and put my foot up in that door jam and hold my foot on that so it wouldn't run the battery dead. And, and so I sat there and I was like, man, this is great. I've got a breeze now. And so I didn't care how long Dad talked. Little did I know that Dad was going to come by and shut my door before he got in the truck. So I learned a quick lesson. Leave the door shut real quick. But I said all that to say this. Can it be that simple to turn the light on, just open the door? How can it be that simple that that little switch was what done it? And it's really not that simple. It runs through a whole a wiring diagram and runs through the computer of the truck or the car. And now they've got a lot more uh, fancier than that. And, and, and you can dim the lights and you can do all these things. But, but as I'm trying to get to it today and trying to give you the message, you control the switch that turns the light on and that switch is controlled by you and how you open that door to let others perceive that. Now we're, we're talking about a, a light that's a, on a city and, and you say, why this story today? Why this story about this light today? Well, Jesus said this, our light was no good if no one ever sees it. Our light is no good if nobody ever sees it. You can have, listen to me real close today, and I, I don't want to put you under conviction. I don't want to uh, shame you or anything, but you can have all the Jesus in the world. You can have all the talent in the world, but it's no good if nobody ever sees it. It's no good if you don't let the world know. And it led me to this topic today, open the door. So many of us today have the light that we uh, or, or have the light that will lead the paths of so many others. You think about that Bible school prayer, uh, a light unto my path, and I will hide its words in my heart that I may not sin against God. And it's talking about our pledge of allegiance to the Bible. And then it'll be a light unto our path. Well, guess what? It's okay to share our light. Listen to me real close today. It's okay to share our light into someone else's path to help lead them along the way. It's okay to let somebody else see our light. But, but we sit quietly, listen to this, we sit quietly in the dark 
Because we've got all the Jesus we need. We've got the salvation we need. We've got the love we need. We've got the hope. We've got the grace, the peace. We've got the understanding that we need. Well, I want you to know something today. Not everybody has it like you do. Not everybody has that grace and that hope and that understanding. Just in your heart today, tell me, do you have a greater desire uh, to know the Word of God uh, more deeper? Amen? Do you have a greater desire to draw closer to Him every day? I want you to know, after we left this place last week and and that song, The Goodness of God, and, and talking about how good God has been in our lives, if you didn't this week try to give up a little bit of that God to somebody else, then brother, I want you to know this altar is meant for you this morning. This is a place to where you can come and get a desire. You say, well, I don't need to go to the altar. I've been saved. You may need to come to the altar and find out how to share your salvation. You may need to come and find out how to open that door. This may be the switch today that turns that light on for you. That you say, I've got a lot that the world needs to see. I've got a lot that the, of the lost and the, the drug addicts and the beaten and abused and the, the mistreated, all those, they need to see my light. Because I want you to know what everybody in here that has, but it's different, each one of you, we all have a story. We all have a story of where we came from. And at some point in time, we've closed the door on that story. And we've said, I I don't want to share that part of that story. How many of you remember a few months back the cardboard testimony uh, service we had? Amen? How how well it moved and how many people it moved. Well, that was just a few. I think there was 11 or 12 that, that opened up that door and showed their light and showed that story. But they, they opened up and said, I want the world to see my light. I want them, maybe, maybe I want the world, let me take this from a different angle. Maybe I want the world to see what darkness I had and then I found the light and I want to share that light that brought me out of that darkness. How many of you have ever sat under a bridge and, and fished at night? Yeah. It works better when you put that little floating light out there, don't it? You put that little floating light and it draws the bait fish. And, and I want you to know this. When you draw those bait fish, then the, the big fish begin to come in and, and, and it begins to work. And it begins, think about this all together. Any type of bait that you go and buy, it, it, it glimmers and it shimmers and it attracts through light. You see what I'm trying to say today is we need to attract people by the light that's already in the building. But we've got the door shut. Somebody's got the door shut on him. We're not only, when we, when we keep, uh, keep this door shut, we're not only shortchanging those that need us. Oh, I, I want you to know something today. You listen to me real close. There's going to be a day when we stand before the Lord. Amen? Amen. There's going to be a day we stand before Him and we're going to answer for things we've done and things we haven't done. Amen. And I'd hate to be standing there before Him with a pocket full of blessings that I didn't give out to somebody. I'd hate to be standing before him knowing that I had a light inside of me and that light would have been just as bright if I'd have left the door open the whole time. It would have been just as bright. And, and, and so we not only shortchange those that need us, but we're not living the life that we are supposed to live out for Christ. Do you believe me today that our life is to be lived out for Christ today? You say, no, my life's lived out because my name is so-and-so and and I've got a a legacy in this community and my family before me has set a trend and set a name and I'm supposed to do this and I'm supposed to do that and I'm supposed to walk in this manner and, and act in this manner and speak in this manner because my family name is this. I, I want you to know something. Uh, the moment you got saved, there was a name wrote down in the Lamb's Book of Life and that's the only name you need to be worried about honoring today is that name that Jesus wrote down there and he said so uh, I will stand instead for this one I have wrote their name down I have saved their soul from a devil's hell and their name is written in this Lamb's book of life and I stand for them I was crucified for them that is the name you need to uphold today and that name is what got you that light to start with That's the light that we need to be letting shine. We're not living our life out like we're supposed to for Christ. I could get up every day and I could go to work and and I could be happy. 
uh, because I, I gained things monetarily. But if I didn't have Jesus in my life, I'd be most miserable, amen? amen? Because my life is to be lived out for Him. There's sacrifices you have to make. We keep ourselves and what we represent closed up in the dark. We're closed up and we're, we're shut off to the world. It keeps us from having... Listen to this. You shut that door and you hide that light. Guess what else you hinder? You hinder your voice. You don't have an opportunity to speak because you're not part of the conversation. You've not opened that door. You've not got out. You know, I remember as, as a kid, later on growing up, I would stand on the front porch at mom and dad's and somebody would pull up in the yard and I would never start walking to them until I seen the door open and I seen who was in there. Because I, I'm going to be honest with you, on the day we got married, about half of my family, I told Leisha, I said, this is your wedding present. You got them now. They're not mine no more. And she can, she can laugh at that, but she knows what I'm talking about because it, it was every time they, they came up, it was, I need this and I need that and I need this and I need that. But now I have some other family that as soon as that door opened and I seen one of my aunts and, and God bless them, three of them, uh, one's going through cancer and one's going through uh, other health problems and one just two weeks ago had a stroke and as they're going through these and they're getting older uh, I, I know that there's going to come a day that I'm going to not have them and I'm going to miss them but as they would open the door I never went to my uncle's side of the car I always went to wherever my aunt was sitting when that light came on and I was able to see which side my aunt was on because I want you to know something guys no offense but uncles just don't give good hugs amen but those aunts Oh, my Lord. You know why? Because they were descendants of my grandmother. And they hugged like grandma. They loved like grandma did. And they still do. But we, we sit there and we keep that light up and we take away our voice. It's an opportunity not only to speak for ourselves, but to speak for Jesus and to tell the world what it needs. Listen to this. Write this down if you want to. What the world needs to know. And the second part, what the world wants to know. We can argue all day long, well, this world don't really want God. But I stand before you today and tell you this world really does want God. People are just afraid to ask for it. They're afraid to ask you where you stand with God. They're afraid to ask you where you are with God. And you say, well, why are they afraid to ask? If they ask, I'd tell them everything. They shouldn't have to ask you. You should kick the door open, turn the light on, and they should be able to see where you stand with God. If you opened that door and you had that light on, then they would know where you stood with God. The world wants to know God. Why does the world want to know God? It's because that's why we were formed in the very beginning, to know Him and to love Him and to worship Him. I thought about it in many ways this week, but it, to sum it all up, I want you to think of this. And this is going to be kind of harsh and kind of, uh, simple, but it, it, it makes the most sense. We can't live our heads, uh, or, or we can't live like turtles with our heads pulled back in our shell. Right, we can't be what God wants us to be if, if we're slowly moving around. And I know my wife's going to hate this because she loves turtles. And the only thing that that helps me is I don't have to be really fast at anything I can do. I said, well, I'm just acting like a turtle for you. <laughs> but we can't live our lives hemmed up, pulled back in our shell for safety. You know why we do that? Listen, this is why I'm going to tell you today, well, I don't know why I act how I act, preacher. I don't know why I do what I do. I'll tell you why you do it, because you're pulling it back from safety, safety of being hurt. You don't want to put yourself out there and then get hurt. I want you to know something. Uh, when you stick your neck out and you put yourself out and you open that door, there's going to be somebody comes by that don't want that light. There's going to be somebody that comes by and tries to shut your foot in the door. And you're going to say, wow, that hurt. I don't know if I like all this. If you come to church to not get your feelings hurt, you're going to be surprised. Amen? Amen. Because guess what? It's where we come to work out our differences and our opinions. But it says that we can't live our lives like that. We're say, uh, doing it for safety of being hurt. Safety of being embarrassed. But here's the biggest one of why we do this. We're, we're, we pull our necks back and we hide in our shell because we don't want to be held accountable. We don't want to have a job to do. 
We don't want to have a place that we have to show up regular. We don't want to have a, a, something that we're held accountable for, be put in charge of this or put in charge of that. Well, it just gets to be too much. I want to ask you, what is too much for God? What is too much for God? Is coming to choir practice on Wednesdays and being at Sunday school, I'm going to preach on Sunday school for a minute, but there's not a doubt in my mind that there's people in here that really want to come to Sunday school, uh, but on Sunday morning you get up and you're feeling tired because you watch the late night fight on Saturday night or, or you watch the late night basketball game or, or maybe you just sat there and you watch Netflix too long. Maybe you uh, got uh, uh, caught up at a late movie with your wife or uh, you, maybe you stood in that long, horrible line at uh, Texas Roadhouse last night that was two hours and 15 minute wait. Maybe you've done all those things and you're just too tired. Well, I'm going to ask you something. What if Jesus would have said, I'm just too tired to go to the cross today? What if Jesus said, I'm just too tired to die for the world's sins today? I'm just too tired, Father, today. Let's, let's put it off a little bit. I want you to know what is too much for God. There is no such thing. It goes back to that saying, you can't outgive God. You say, oh, well, I pay my tithes. I, I, I want your time too, is what he says. I need your service as well. You can give all the money in the world, but I need service to go with it. I need some time to go with it. But we don't want to be held accountable. We don't speak because we don't want to serve. Oh, I want you to know something today. I should have a bigger problem than I have here. At the end of this service, like any other, I'm going to step down and I'm going to say, does anybody have anything? And the silence is going to ring off the walls. I find it hard to believe that in a house full of people, full of God, that nobody has nothing to say. But I want you to know something. Why don't we have something to say? Because people are looking at me. And if I say something, they're going to hold me accountable for what I say. If I stand up and say I want to live a better life for Christ, they're going to expect me to live a better life. If I stand up and say I'm going to do this, they're going to expect me to do that. I want you to know something today. I believe this with all that's in me that is, that when we all bow down in the altar and we beg Jesus to save us, how we made that term to Him, that statement, I'll do anything anything uh, you'll have me to do if you'll just save me. Uh, I want you to know something today. He came through on His part. Uh, uh, when you ask and you receive and you believed and you confess it, He came through on His part today. Now He's asking you to open the door, turn the light on, and show the world Jesus. He's asking you today to open the door. Let's read verse 14 again. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. That could say they are the light of the world. Many are the light of the world. Others are the light of the world. But it says ye, meaning you. I want to speak to each one of you individual today and tell you, you are the one. He wanted you here today and needed you to know this for this very reason. That not only does Jesus need you, not only does the ministry need you, not only does the kingdom need you, but harmony needs you. And Jesus has placed you here to help open doors, to show light, and to give people uh, that light they need in this world of darkness. You say, why am I hearing this today? I just answered it for you. Jesus has placed you here and wants you to open that door. He wants you to speak out. You may show your light at times and you're saying I've opened my door with no effect so I'm just going to keep it closed. Well then I'm going to tell you this fact today. If you've opened your door and you've shown your light and it had no effect and then you've closed your door and people have asked you to open it back up and you're not opening it then you're just like Peter was. When Peter was asked three times if he knew Jesus he denied him all three times. I want you to know something. One of the men that walked the closest with Jesus, and I, I don't want to put any of them above another, but I believe Jesus had a love for him. He denied him. So you're not wrong in, in what you're doing. It, it's the carnal part. But let me, let me tell you what happened later on with Peter. Y'all know what happened? Yeah, Peter got his chance for redemption. 
Peter got his chance. When he asked him, who do you say that I am? You know what he was doing? He's giving him a chance then to speak. Who do you say he is today? He's giving you a chance to speak. It's not that we have to have Jesus and be closed up and be quiet all the time because everything has to be Jesus or nothing. He wants us to speak. He wants us to sing. He wants us to shout. He wants us to talk. But if you're just closing it up, you're like Peter. You're denying Christ. You're denying yourself. And you're devaluating de yourself. I want you all to know in here today there's not one greater than the other. You all have value to the kingdom of God. Do you believe that today? Amen? Amen. You all have value to the kingdom of God. Well, I can't give as much and I can't do as much. I don't want to ask you to do more than you can do. I don't want to ask you to give more than you can give. But I want you to give what is required and what you can give today. And, and that's in time, service, and money as well. I want you to do everything God's allowed you to do. I hope each one of you, if y'all get a song, I hope you get the point of this message today. In times of darkness, we need light. This world is a dark, dark place. And they want to know about God. Trust me, they want to know. They need our light. So Harmony Church, this is what I want you to do. I want you to open a door today. You say, oh, I've had something I've needed to tell the church for a while. I've got something I want to say. I've got something I need to do about the love of this place or how they've treated me or whatever it may be. I want you to know today if you've lived the same week I have lived this last week, you cannot deny the goodness of God. Amen? Amen. If you've seen it, it started as soon as service was over with a Facebook post. Well, I want you to know this today. We went to meeting with people riding down the road last week. Do you believe that today? Do you believe that's possible today? If you don't think it's possible, come ride with me sometime. I am living in the goodness of God today. Are you, are you ready to open that door and be that light? Are you ready to speak up and say, God, use me. Let me be a willing vessel well, the time from 11.30 to 12 was the pastor's time. And I'm done. But church, I'm going to ask you today, who's got the light that will light this service and carry it on? Who is it today? Stand to your feet. What's your number? church I want to ask you today to move however you need to move you may need to go to somebody you may not want to stand where you're standing you may want to move and hug somebody's neck because I'll assure you this we'll never be gathered just this way again it'll never happen just like this again
Tony, I, I have something to say. Um, talk about the line. Opening the door. Ten years ago, our brother could take I was one of the biggest drug heads that hit it. I hit it from all of my family. It took my ex-wife to catch it through the bank account. My God, which is everybody's God in this house, for your sake, was right there before I become a drug addict. He was right there again when I gave it up on my home. I gave it up and I stayed at my own home instead of going to a rehabilitation, which I should have done. But I laid it all in God's hands. I'm grateful and I'm thankful that God did not turn his back on me because I followed the devil's path on my own. So just know, drugs are in this world every day, and they're getting stronger. I hear about it from co-workers. I just lost friends recently. It's been in prison for them. I pray every day and every night that God uses me somewhere, somehow, to talk to someone. God is there for you. I'm going to be there for you. So thank you for your message because that lets me know to open my door. Quit holding it shut. Maybe I can touch somebody. I pray I can. Anyone else? journey and we're called to walk by faith there'll always be the mountains and valleys in our way but right here in this moment may our strength be renewed as we recall what God has done and how we've seen him move if there's anybody here who's found him faithful, anybody here who knows he's able, say amen. If there's anybody here who's seen his power, anybody here brought through the fire, say amen. Anybody here found joy in the midst of sorrow, peace in the storm, and hope for tomorrow? And you've seen it time and time again. Just say, Amen. Sometimes through the darkness, it gets hard to see. But be bold and courageous and follow where he leads. Greater is the one who's in us than he who's in the world. So child of God, remember that the battle is the Lord. If there's anybody here who's found him faithful, anybody here who knows he's able, say amen. If there's anybody here who's seen his power, anybody here brought through the fire, say amen. Anybody here found joy in the midst of sorrow, peace in the storm, and hope for tomorrow? And you've seen it time and time again. Just say, Amen. Just stand and testify of the greatness of God in our lives. If there's anybody here who's found him faithful, anybody here who knows he's able, say, 
say amen. If there's anybody here who's seen his power, anybody here brought through the fire, say amen. Anybody here found joy in the midst of sorrow, peace in the storm and hope for tomorrow, and you've seen it time and time again. Just say amen. Just say amen. Just say Anybody have anything? I love you. I appreciate you. We asked you prayers for every family that's going through trials right now, for test results coming back, for test results that were just given, follow-up appointments, all those things. Um, again, pray for the safety of those that's coming back today from North Carolina. Anything else before we dismiss? Our lives and, and guidance through. I've had peace about it the whole time from God. I knew that I kept telling Gary, I said, it's going to be okay. God's given me peace about it. But I know there's been a lot of prayers said, and I appreciate each and every one of them, and y'all just keep praying. And uh, there's no doubt God's in it because. If, uh, I was trying to be the match, and they called me and asked me who they wanted, who we wanted to be first on the list, uh, and I told them me. But uh, my uh, urine thing didn't come back uh, good enough, so Alicia was chosen first, and so they called me again. And keeping that from him has been the hardest thing, especially on days that we've had hard days. <laughs> Because he has got the car from Dallas and told me that he's tired and he didn't want to go through it anymore. And uh, so God has been in this, there's no doubt, because they said the only way he could have a closer match was if it was his blood relative. So uh, just thank you, God, for everything you're doing. And just remember Alicia and, and him as they go through this, Lord. Just pray that everything is uh, goes well. And, just be with him, and I'm so thankful. I'm thankful for everything he's done for us. And uh, please remember uh, Chad Barrett. Also, uh, he is making a little bit of progress. So y'all just—he's the one that was in the farm accident. Uh, his heart only was at 25 to 30 percent when he had the accident and got crushed, but it has went up to about 40 or 45, I think. She posted so. It's a miracle in itself that he's making progress. So we love all y'all. I want to extend this in case you don't know it. I hope everybody here knows it. When we finish here on Sundays and we lift our hands and we say thank you, Jesus, and we leave, that's not the only time you can reach out to me. I want you to know I'm here 24-7. And so many of you will say, well, you've got so much going on. You've got this, you've got that. Guess what? It can all wait if you need me. I'm here for you. I want you to know that. I love each of you. And I just felt like somebody here today needed to know my door is open. If I can be a light, come plug in. Burn me out. Amen. You with me, Shannon? Amen. I see you over there. I love you, church. Lift your hands towards heaven and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're free to go.